Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia. Charlie is back in Wales, however she's really not feeling well at the moment so unfortunately she couldn't come and record with me today. So again, and hopefully for the last time in a while, it's just me talking to you. This time I have a bit of a moral dilemma and I'm sure you can all tell from the title. It is about separating the art from the artist, or in this case the book from the author. What brought this up in my mind was me looking at what to buy next on Audible as an audiobook for me to listen to next month because I have a monthly subscription so I'm already looking for what I want to listen to in February. And a book that's been making me curious for a few years actually since I saw it on my parents bookshelf when I was a child is uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley's The Mists of Avalon. It's this epic retelling of the Arthurian legend and I think the audiobook is something like 40 hours long, so I'm, I was quite keen to get that. Then I googled the author, and I'm sure you all know what comes next. I found out about the horrible allegations made against her by her own children of sexual assault and just horrible things. That put me off, getting this book. But now I'm wondering, is that right? Am I right to not buy this book because the author has done horrible things? Now, Marion Zimmer Bradley died two decades ago, so she isn't going to profit from me actually buying this book. But somehow in my head that's still stopping me from going there. So it's not even the issue of profit and who profits from me buying this book, it's just that I somehow don't want to read it anymore. But I still kind of do, and now I'm facing this weird dilemma. So I was thinking about other cases where something like that has come up, and I could think of two. The most recent one is another one that you'll be familiar with, and that's the upcoming film, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. So the second part of the Fantastic Beasts franchise. The title character is played by Johnny Depp, who we can all agree is problematic. This has been in the news a lot, you know, J.K. Rowling did a sort of half assed response, and there have been discussions all over, and I just don't know whether I'm going to go and see this film or not. I really want to be part of this Fantastic Beasts thing that's happening, you know, I'm excited by it. But on the other hand, I don't want to put any money in Johnny Depp's pockets. I still haven't made up my mind with regards to that. And then there was a third case that I could think of with my personal experience with music, where for some reason, and I'd quite like to know why that is. I have no problems whatsoever with listening to a, a specific composer. And the person I'm talking about is a 16th century Italian nobleman called Carlo Gesualdo. In the classical music world, he is famous for two things. First are his absolutely beautiful madrigals, way ahead of, of their time, just stunning, beautiful vocal music. And the second thing is his brutal murdering of his wife. The two are completely interlinked because if he hadn't murdered his wife then we probably wouldn't be that interested in his music nowadays and if he hadn't been such a talented composer then you know just another nobleman murdering his wife probably wouldn't have made it into our consciousness today. I'm wondering why I have no qualms whatsoever with listening to his music and recommending to his music. In fact, I'm going to put a link in the description box for one of his madrigals so you can see for yourself if you're not familiar with that kind of music. But anyway, why am I totally okay with listening to Gesualdo's music, but I'm still not sure whether to read Marion Zimmer Bradley's book or watch Johnny Depp's film? Is it because Gesualdo lived hundreds of years ago? Is it because the scandal happened hundreds of years ago. Is it because Gesualdo is an accepted part of mainstream classical music? But then Marion Zimmer Bradley is an accepted part of modern classical fantasy literature. I don't know. Please help me. Or at the very least, I'd really appreciate if you could comment below with your opinion on this, with your own experiences and how you go about thinking about stuff like that. Do you separate the art from the artist? Does your enjoyment of one depend on your opinion of the other? 
please let me know. I'm really interested to see your responses. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.